time for another experiment with the CDV700 and my Strontium 90 beta source as well as this piece of self-made shielding. It consists of about 4 millimeters of aluminum foil that are tightly packed together and about 1 millimeter of lead on the other side. And there's a marking on there for placing it in the correct spot. And, well, you know my beta source. It's detectable from even here. And it maxes out the scale quickly. But what I'm going to do now is place it in front of the lead here. Just in the proper position in the middle. And hold it right in front. With the line from the T top line making up one line with the marking spot I have on the aluminum and now let's just observe you can see that we're getting about 100 to 200 counts per minute. Great fluctuations, but yeah. And now, let's just place the strontium on the other side. So it will be the same shield, the same position on here as well. And what you can see is we're getting these random fluctuations to about 300 counts per minute. That's really strange. How can this be? It's in the same position and it's exactly the same shield. It's just either that way or that way. So what's exactly happening there? So here's our beta particle, which is basically just an electron being emitted from that strontium-90 atom. So it just shoots out that way. But the thing is that we have matter in place, aluminum or lead. And so we've got atoms there. Let's say this is a lead atoms nucleus. It's not the correct size in comparison. But still, well, just imagine this is the uh, lead or aluminum atom. And then here comes the electron. What happens then? It's not actually going a straight line, but it gets deflected in the field, in the column field of that atom. So, and that's exactly what happens. It gets deflected and slowed down. And this energy is never lost. Uh, that energy has to sort of go somewhere else. So, while our electron passes by, we're actually getting a nice little x-ray out of that deceleration process. And uh, that is called Bremsstrahlung, which basically means uh, breaking radiation. And it's actually the same that happens if we use the electrons that we know as electricity. If you stick those into a vacuum tube, and they're really fast, like uh, have a very high voltage, because um, not typical 220 volts or 120 or whatever you've got where you live will not really do that much. But uh, if you've got a higher voltage, let's say 25,000 volts or up, and you put that in here, you will actually get that breaking radiation from the anode cylinder and that is called x-radiation. That's why old TV sets that had improper shielding like on this PD500 tube that has no lead or whatever in the glass would emit x-radiation as well. That wasn't really on purpose but it's just a matter of the design because in uh, CRT tubes like old TV sets or old monitors you had to um, accelerate the electrons in order to produce the images to about 25 to 35 thousand volts. And that way, those tubes, as well as the huge tubes that is actually your screen, would produce x-rays. By now, all those tubes are properly shielded, so no x-rays are escaping it, really. But you can simply produce 
X-ray radiation, which is basically just Bremsstrahlung, out of tubes like this, for example. But, anyway, back to our strontium 90 source, and that thing. Well, and for those aluminum atoms, we actually have a mass number of 27, or for the lead atoms, we have a mass number of usually 208, uh, different isotopes, 207, 206 as well, but most of it is 208, as far as I remember. So, anyway, over 200, way over 200, so that's why lead is much heavier than aluminum, as we all know. And actually, something that I didn't quite expect was happening, because the lead atoms being heavier, should actually produce more x-radiation, so if I place it that way around, it should have produced more x-radiation, especially on a thin sheet of lead, because if you've got too much lead, it will just uh, capture the released photons, the released x-rays right away, and shield themselves. So, um, but yeah, this, this uh, sheet of lead I thought would be thin enough, but actually it was the aluminum side that produced the most x-radiation that way. I suppose this aluminum was just perfect for creating Bremsstrahlung, but I'm not actually 100% sure why this happened, but the thing is, why there was a difference was certainly because of the so-called Bremsstrahlung, the breaking radiation. And we can uh, prove that by using another source and doing the same experiment. Sad? That was Peter a beta source, an electron source. And now let's see what happens if we use electromagnetic radiation, photons, or as we also call it, gamma radiation. X radiation would be the same, except that what you what you get from decay you call gamma radiation, and what you produce from high voltage into electron tubes, for example, you call X radiation. But still, it's technically it's the same. So let's see what happens if we just use something that does not emit any particles but just that electromagnetic radiation, that gamma radiation. So here's the barium. You can see we have a thousand between about 1,500 counts of fluctuations. And if we do it like this, It's not that easy to tell, of course, because, you know, it maxes out the scale on the times one setting, so we've got a lot more radiation that registers uh, to begin with, but still, um, yeah, this is just, no matter how you do it, either that way or that way, it's just about the same radiation, as much as random stuff like radioactive decay can be even, but yeah, you can see a lot, a large difference uh, to the strontium 90 source here. So I suppose that's because this barium 133 source is actually a pure gamma emitter and does not produce Bremsstrahlung. But anyway, if you've got any ideas or theories why that aluminum side was actually unexpectedly working better in producing Bremsstrahlung than the lead side, just let me know. I will then soon try and prove or disprove your ideas in further experiments with Brems. Oh dear, I'm saying it in an English way. At Bremsstrahlung. It's German, for fuck's sake.